Welcome to Let's Play The Stanley Parable. We have a story about a man named Stanley told by a narrator. And we can choose whether or not to follow that story. And that will obviously change things. And before we begin, I'd like to mention I really like this Inception screen on the main menu here. And now, let's begin. First up, we have a loading screen. The end is never the end, it's never the end, it's never the end, and that just continues. Oh well. This loading screen takes surprisingly long. Maybe because it's the first time. Possible. Ah, there we go. Now it loads. I really hope this is just because it's the first time. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor at his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul ending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. And now we get to move. And that's basically all we can do too. We can move, we can crouch, and I don't think we can jump. Yep, pressing space does not work. And we can interact with the left mouse button. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Someone left the PC on. What a safe energy. Jeez. Well, for the first time, let's mostly follow his instructions. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. What? And the door closes behind us. And we can't go back. Excellent! Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. How to solve a dispute with a coworker? Hey, I wasn't finished with that. Using slides to assure employees that everything is okay. Make sure your slide has a sleek blue graphic in the header and so some bevel at the. Okay, whatever. Everyone is unique. You, most of all. Nice. <laughs> Numbers of slides on the slide. 
slice, shards, shards and slides. Fantastic. Wait, that wood shards on the same slide to pick the same information. Ah, fantastic. Room closet. Ooh, actually it was it opens. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. You wish. Let's take the room. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow. Just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. Oh, there's plenty of reason, dear narrator. You just don't see it. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. I assume we can do that with anything. Are you... are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm... I'm genuinely confused. Because why not? Is that enough of a reason for you, dear narrator? You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. I think it's pretty significant. Screw you. Maybe to you this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. I hope your friends find this concerning. Yep, that's exactly what I sound like. More or less. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That or with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. Okay, now he's getting wooed. Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical melody of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. He or she has fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place at the computer, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming, so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. That was the most fourth world breaking monologue I've ever seen, heard, whatever. Both actually, since there are subtitles. And I think he's done. Also, I got the you can't jump achievement. No, seriously, we disabled it. Yeah, the achievements are kind of weird in this game. Ah, second player. It's good to have you on board. I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. Oh, really? You too? Unbelievable. I'm at the mercy of an entire species of invalids. Perhaps there's a monkey nearby you can hand the controls to. A fish? Fungus? Look, you can hammer out the details. I'm not particularly picky. I'll just be waiting for when you're ready to pick up the story again. And I think that's it. Well, that should be all for the room closet, I think. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Now we can get the normal ending. The broom closet ending wasn't the real ending. But I think it was a pretty worthwhile experience nonetheless. The rest of us this way, I think. Actually, can we open one of these soft doors here? 
Shakir bathroom. Nope. Oh, what's this? Okay, no. I thought at some point you could open one of these doors here, but I'm not exactly sure. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, mm. Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yep. So let's brute force it. Let's try this number first. Nope. Let's try it again. Stanley just sat around Eight. twiddling his thumb. Stanley simply began entering random codes into the keypad knowing full well the sheer statistical unlikelihood that this would ever result in a correct combination. If he knew that the combo was 2845, it would be another story entirely. But no, 2845. Yeah, okay, I get it. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. By the way, the reason why I pushed 8888888 take or leave 18 with several, I don't know, is because it's an achievement. You actually had to put it in twice. Okay, let's go down. Feels like I'm back in Aperture Science. <clears throat> and sure enough, it's loading faster now. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Maybe because he was so concentrated on pushing buttons. Yep, really feels like I'm back in Aperture Science. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Light the lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Oh god, it's almost like my gaming setup. <laughs> Just kidding. My gaming setup is not even close to this. Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Um, okay. I have no idea where our office is. Okay. 427 it should be. Do it 427. Yep, so that's our office alright. Looks pretty unique actually. Cool. A box. We can't open this. Too bad. This seems like an elevator. This mind control facility. It was too horrible to believe it couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? Huh. 
play one of the has been fired. Also, doesn't every company have a mind control facility like no. this? No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? I'm certain my company would have a mind control facility if I had that. But here's <laughs> the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Okay, now let's try again. If I ever had a company, jeez, it's not that hard to say. Chloe. Cool. Must be the disco. Not exactly sure how building the disco in the mind control facility is a good idea though. Waiting input. And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Okay. It's black now. entirely black anymore. Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes! He had won! He had defeated the machine! Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Another mystery. How the heck did we get here? But none of that matters. That's pretty. Who builds the exit to a facility in a place like this so full of nature? But none of that matters. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. And we've beaten the game. But as you maybe have seen, there were a lot of options. But we'll leave those options for next time. So, oops. But Stanley simply couldn't no, handle the pressure. What if he had to make a decision? I didn't what if a crucial outcome fell under his responsibility? He had never been trained for that. No. This couldn't go any way except badly. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. Nothing will hurt me. Nothing will break me. In here I can be happy forever. I will be happy. Stanley waited. Hours passed. 
then days. Had years gone by? He no longer had the ability to tell. But the one thing he knew for sure beyond any doubt was that if he waited long enough, the answers would come. Eventually, someday, they would arrive. Soon, very soon now, this will end. He will be spoken to. He will be told what to do. Now it's just a little bit closer. Now it's even closer. Here it comes. Well, seems like we did get another ending. Oops. This looks super interesting. So, Eric, let's explore the rest of the game last time. What? I kind of jumbled up the words right there. The West next time. Not all of, all of the West, but some of it. So, until then, see ya.